Physics lecture number 12, projectiles launched at an angle, part two. There are two types of projectile problems that are hard to solve, so I'm putting them in a separate lecture. Problem number one, cannonball is shot from the edge of a 40 meter tall cliff at a speed of 50 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. Find the maximum height it reaches. Find the time it is airborne and the horizontal distance it travels before hitting the ground. So here's a picture of what's going on. You have a projectile launched at the edge of a 40 meter tall cliff. It's being launched at an angle of 35 degrees and at a diagonal velocity of 50 meters per second. Um, it reaches a peak, and this peak is going to be 40 meters plus delta ym. Um, and then it lands over here. So what we're trying to find is uh, how tall does it reach, the maximum peak, uh, what horizontal distance it travels, and in order to do that we need to know the total of time in the air to find the uh, total horizontal distance. Well we can sort of get started. Um, the initial horizontal velocity can be found by using Vx equals 50 cosine 35, and the initial vertical velocity can be found using Vy equals 50 sine 35. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and start uh, setting it up. Let's just sign up for the initial vertical velocity and the initial uh, horizontal velocity. So if we do that, we have Vy equals 50 sine 35, Vy equals 50.5735, that's the sine of 35, and then 50 times that number gives me 28.6788. And then to find the horizontal velocity, 50 cosine 35, Cosine of 35 is 0.8191, and then this number times 50 gives me that. So we have the initial vertical velocity, and we have the horizontal velocity. Now, when the cannonball reaches the maximum peak, its vertical velocity is zero. So we can use, essentially, v squared equals 2a delta y to find delta y. So anytime an object uh, starts from rest or comes to a stop, you can use this formula uh, for velocity. All right, so let's go ahead and solve it. Vy squared equals 2a delta y sub m. The initial vertical velocity that we just solved for is uh, 28.6788, 2 times acceleration of gravity times delta y m. So if we rearrange this to solve for delta y m, uh, delta y m equals 28.6788 squared divided by 2 times 9.81. So if we solve this, we got 41.92. So what we just did is we solved for this part of the uh, trajectory. So the height, the change in height from here to here from when it started is going to be uh, 41.92. So the maximum height it reaches is going to be 40 plus 41.92. So if we do that, 40 plus 41.92 is about 82 meters. So uh, the total vertical height is 82 meters. Now to find the time that the ball is airborne, we're going to use delta y equals vyt plus 1 half at squared. Now, we set delta y equal to negative 40 because the ball ends up below its original height. So it starts here, it ends here, it went down 40 meters. So that's why we have the negative sign in front of it, because the change in direction was downward. And also we set a equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared because the ball's vertical velocity slows down and changes direction. Uh, it first goes up, slows down, stops, then goes down. So in terms of vertical motion, it goes you know up, 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 slows down, slows down, stops, then changes direction and comes back down faster and faster. So we have to use negative acceleration anytime something slows down and or changes direction. Okay, so let's substitute the values in. The change in uh, vertical distance is negative 40, negative in a downward direction. Vy that we solved for earlier is 28.6788. Uh, one half A, acceleration is negative 9.81 T squared. 
So we're going to try to solve for t, and what we'll do is uh, we'll move this, we'll get everything over to one side and zero on the other side. So if we do that, if we move this over here and subtract this from both sides, we end up with this expression. All right, so this is just this rearranged. And then 1 half times 9.81 is 4.905 t squared. All right. And then if we divide this entire equation by 4.95, that'll give us this. All right, so a whole schmear divided by 4.905 will give us this. And then to solve for t, well, this is a quadratic equation. So t is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So b, that's going to be that, so that's b, and then um, c is this, so that's what c is, a, implicitly there's a 1 in front of here, so that's a, alright, so plugging these numbers in for a, b, and c to solve for t, we get that expression, and then if we solve for this whole mess and take the square root, we get 8.1734. And then 5.8468 minus 8.1734 gives me negative 1.16. And then 5.84 plus 8.17 gives me a 7.01. Uh, so we're going to pick the positive value uh, for time. So the time is 7.01 or uh, 7 seconds airborne. So now, uh, to find the horizontal distance, we use delta x equals vx times t. So this is what we use for t, and then vx we solved for earlier. Delta x equals vxt. vx we solved for earlier, 40.9550. t is 7.01. These two numbers multiplied together gives us about 287. Rounded, that's 2.9 times 10 to the 2 horizontal distance. So... This turns out to be 2.9 times 10 to the 2 meters. So if you launch an object from this height at this velocity at this angle, it'll travel a horizontal distance of 2.9 times 10 to the 2. Let's try another problem. A football player attempts to kick a field goal from 27.43 meters away. The horizontal bar of the goalpost is 9.14 meters high. He kicks the ball, which initially moves at an angle of 54 degrees from the horizontal. Uh, the ball lands on the horizontal bar. What was the initial velocity of the ball? So here's a picture of what all this says. The ball is kicked at some unknown diagonal velocity at an angle of 54 degrees, and then it sails through the end, and after it travels a horizontal distance of 27.43 meters, it's at a height of 9.14 meters. So given that it travels this horizontal distance and this vertical height, and it was launched at this angle, what was the initial diagonal velocity? Well, to sort of get us started, we'll once again solve for the horizontal and vertical components of uh, velocity. Vy is V sine 54, and Vx is going to be V cosine 54. We're going to use these later on. <coughs> Now to find velocity v, uh, we need the time t. So what we're going to do is we're going to define v in terms of t and substitute it into delta y equals vy t plus 1 half a t squared and solve for t. Uh, once we have t, we can use it to find v. All right. So we're going to find an expression for velocity in terms of t. Well, we know that the horizontal distance the object travels is going to be the horizontal velocity times time, and the horizontal velocity is expressed as v cosine 54. That's from here. Cosine of 54 is 0.5877. And then what we want to do is we want to solve for v. So if we rearrange this and uh, solve for v, get it isolated, we're going to have v equals 27.43 divided by 0.5877. So we just divided both sides by 0.5877t. All right, and then 27.43 divided by 0.5877 gives me uh, 46.67 divided by t. So we're going to use this expression uh, later on. We're going to substitute this into the next equation. 
All right, well, the vertical velocity or the vertical distance is going to be vyt plus one half at squared. We know the vertical distance it covers is 9.14. V sine 54 is vy. All right, so that's this. T is just T, one half A, and then acceleration is negative 9.81 um, T squared. And then uh, let's see here. We're going to do some more substituting. V is that 46.67 divided by T. All right, so we're using this from previously. V is 46.67 divided by T. The sine of 54 is 0.8090. And uh, 1 half times negative 9.81 is 4.905. All right, so let's see. Ah, notice something cancels. See this T right here and that T right there? They cancel. So these T's cancel, and we can rewrite this as this. All right, so this is just this without the uh, T's. And then let's see, 46.67 times 0 0.809 is going to be 37.75. And then we're going to move this over to this side and all the numbers over to this side. So 37.75 minus 9.14 gives me 28.616. Uh, if you solve for T, you have 2.4153 seconds. So that's how long the object uh, travels. It takes 2.41 seconds to go like that. After 2.41 seconds, it covers this horizontal distance and that vertical distance. And we can use this now because, as we solved for previously, now that we have T, we can just stick it back into this formula and solve for V. 46.67 over T, and we just solve for T, it's 2.4153, and V is going to be 19.32 or 19 meters per second. So what all this means is, this is gonna be 19 meters per second. So that means that if the ball traveled this horizontal distance and this vertical distance and was launched at this angle, it had to have been kicked at that diagonal speed. Or if you kick it at this diagonal speed at that angle, um, it'll cover this horizontal distance and this height after uh, a certain amount of time, 2.41 seconds. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Physics Lecture Number 12, Projectiles Launched at an Angle, Part 2.